So I'm going to do a demo here where I'm going to take water in an Erlenmeyer flask and I'm heating it up and this is the gas laws demonstration but but there's a lot involved in it and so we're going to go through what are all the important details that you're seeing as well as how to actually set up the demo. So what I've done is I've set up just a hot plate uh, and I'm heating up water on it and it's gotten to the point where it's very hot so I want to move a little quicker here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a balloon that I've pre-stretched so that hopefully it'll be a little more elastic, a little less elastic rather. Uh, and to do this so that I don't get hurt, I'm going to wet my hands first. And I'm also going to carry over a little bit of the top here, which is getting quite warm. But I want to cool down the top, but still have the hot water at the bottom. Okay. Really, I want to be able to move this. It's not going so well. Let me shift this down here. And then I'm going to take this balloon and stick it over the cover. And that right there is really all you need to be able to do the demonstration. It is very hot at the top. But if you have a little cold water in your skin, it'll protect your skin to some degree. Um, if you can get it off of the hot plate. Now, I didn't get my video camera working, but typically I could do it a little faster. Now what's going to happen is that balloon is now going to inflate inside out. Inside of this flask. Which is really doesn't look like much at first, it just looks like a regular balloon. But if you look at this, this is now open, or that's the inside. Okay? If I take a typical balloon, okay, I have to seal it shut in order to keep the air. If I open it, the air comes out. So it's very contradictory in terms of what we would typically see to see this balloon that's inflated but is open. I can stick my finger inside of the balloon and it's, there's nothing there. So, so what's going on? is typically presented that there's a pressure drop as this cools back down. Because I started with a hot gas and now it's cooling back down to room temperature, um, that the balloon is therefore um, being pushed in by the air out here, which is at a, at a higher pressure than the air in here. Uh, realistic wise, the reduction in temperature that we're seeing is not the same as the volume change that we're seeing. So there's something else at play in this, and the, and the key is the water. If we just took a flask and heated it up, even if we got it to a couple hundred degrees Celsius, you would barely see a small change in volume of the gas inside, and we're seeing a huge reduction. So two things are happening. One is it's cooling down, which is causing a, a pressure reduction. But second to that is that as it cools, the, the steam that's inside of this flask is turning back into the liquid. So you're actually removing gas from this. And so as that gas gets removed, then you're seeing an even greater drop in pressure, which is what explains the balloon actually being able to fill in the flask. Now, sometimes when you do this, this balloon will actually pop when it hits the bottom. Um, usually that'll happen when the balloon fills in really quickly and hits the bottom at, at that high temperature. Um, for this one, I think we're safe. And then what we could do is we could put this back onto the container here. If we turned it back on, what would happen then is that balloon would, would start to get pushed because we would be creating more and more steam from that liquid water at the bottom there, which would increase the pressure twofold. Right? First from the increase in temperature and second it would increase the temp it would increase the number of gas molecules by a dramatic amount. So we could actually turn this back on and get the balloon to go back to the top um, if we wanted to. And I think you can see that on the side there that's rising up slowly but surely towards the markings. So that's the balloon in the flask. It's a good demonstration of pressure, but you do have to be cautious that you're not just excluding the, the water from it, that you're looking at how many gas molecules and not just the temperature aspect. Okay.